So my name is Reverend Leonard McElveen and I am the Vice President of Staff Ministry here at Mel Trotter Ministries and it is my privilege to bring you today's memorial service that we're having for Lois Wallace. Lois was a guest uh, here with us at Mel Trotter Ministries and we want to honor the people that have spent time with us that have actually passed on and so that's the reason why we're bringing you today's service we got to know lois very well when she was here and you're going to hear some people who are actually going to talk about her in this video and give her tributes to her time that was here and i would just like to encourage you to think about the fact that not only do we value people once they pass on, but we value people when they're here. Our goal here in this organization is to demonstrate the compassion of Christ to all those that we serve in this place. And so I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for the life that you have. I want you to know that you've been created in the very image of God. And that's the reason why Mel Trotter Ministries honors you. That's why Mel Trotter Ministry wants to meet you exactly where you are. And if there's anything that we can do to support you and assist you in any way that we are capable of, that's the goal of this organization. So we are going to honor Lois today and I just invite you to join with me as we attempt to do that today. And so I want to say a quick word to Lois's family that will also be viewing this video, but also to the staff members and the other guests here that knew Lois. We valued her. We, we are so thankful that God brought her here. We're thankful for the time that she had here, and we're thankful for the impact as a creature created in the image of God that she has had on all of us. And the best way for us to grieve this, this, this loss is for all of us to honor her with this service that we're going to have. So I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer, and then we're going to have a couple of a song and then some tributes, and then I'm going to come back and bring us a message today. And the message is for those of us who are still living. You know, we can't do anything about Lois at this point. But we think about David, her son, who is still a part of our family here. But we also think about those of you that knew Lois, were related to her, had a relationship with her. We think about you in this time because that's the reason why we do memorial services. So I want to open us up in a quick word of prayer and then I'm going to read us an opening scripture. So Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given to each one of us. And I just want to thank you today, Lord, for the life that you gave to Lois. And I thank you for David, and I thank you for the other family members. And I thank you, Lord, for each person, Lord, that knew her, each person that got a chance to experience her here at Mel Trotter Ministries. We just ask, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to deal with the loss that we're facing. And you made a promise in your word that you wouldn't necessarily get us around all the problems that we face. You wouldn't get us under all the problems that we face. You wouldn't get us over all the problems that we face. But as we face the problem of Lois's death, Lord, we ask that you would help us to get through it. Help us to get through it and give us the strength, Lord, to keep going, to keep standing up, to keep fighting and to keep growing and let the memory of Lois serve us well because she was a person that never gave up. She never quit fighting. She never gave up. And so I just want to thank you, Lord, for each one of your children that are listening to us, to this. Help us to not give up. Help us to keep fighting and then help us, Lord, to keep going. And for some of us, Lord, you need to help us to get through the things that we're facing today. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's amazing people said, amen and amen and amen. So I want to read you our opening scripture. It is found in Revelation chapter 21 and it's just four verses. It says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, 
God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them and by and and be their God and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will no longer be death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away.
chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created, the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to My name is Tony Johnson. I'm the director of Culinary Arts Virtual Dining. I'm here today to pay my respects to Lois, um, who was a kind lady, who always had kind things to say to me. We used to laugh and joke a lot. She would always ask for ice at dinner time, and and uh, when she wanted seconds, I would give her seconds. But she was uh, tough. When she was kind. I used to ask David all the time, how's your mom doing? Tell her I said hi. And he, he would tell me, yeah, I told her you said hi. She told me to tell you hi too. And uh, whenever I had to go to Heartside, before Heartside moved to 200, I would see her, I would stop and I would talk to her. She's gonna be missed. And she's a good lady. She's a strong, she's a tough lady. And you know, I just pray for her and her family. Hi, my name is Sabrina. I'm the recovery case manager here at MTM. I've, I have known Lois for about three years now. When I first met Lois, she was a little standoffish. However, it didn't take long for her to show us another side of herself. Her personality really started to come out. Lois was a fun, loving, humorous woman. Just as Lois is a fun, loving, humorous person. She was equally feisty. My favorite memory of Lois is one that can make me laugh still till this day. I can still picture Lois bulldozing her way through the front of the line with her walker. And I'm telling you, I can still picture it to this day and it can still bring a smile on my face. Needless to say, her and I have had a few conversations about not using her walker as a weapon. Me and, me and Lois has shared many conversations. Later in the evening, I would sometimes go stand by her bed and we would talk while she was working on trying to win some big money, scratching on her scratch offs. We had many conversations I got to learn about her family, her you know, things that she had done in the past, what she likes, what she doesn't like. But Lois really loved her family. There was a few opportunities that came up where Lois probably could have left MTM a little sooner, but Lois was in no way going to leave David. If it didn't include David, she wasn't leaving. The opportunity approached and her and David 
had the opportunity to leave. And I'm happy she had that opportunity to have time to herself and settle into life, life outside of MTM and, you know, regain hope and let her know that it was just a season and she, she got through that season and she found her way back home. Talking to David, um, David let me know that his mom is still with him. I don't see Lois leaving David until she, she finds out that he's okay. She loved her boy. And I want to let Lois know she will be missed. And I also want to let her know that David will be okay. David's going to be fine. God put him in good hands. He is part of our MTM family. Hi, I'm Martha Riggs, chaplain at Mel Trotter Ministries. And I just want to share some recollections that I have of our friend, Lois Wallace. Um, Lois was one of the first people that I met when I was volunteering here at Mel Trotter about four and a half years ago. Lois was always very friendly to me and very welcoming. We'd sit down together in the day center and she'd share life. And so I got to know her pretty well. I enjoyed talking with her. I remember when I first met, she was sitting down there. She was working on a, like a crossword puzzle we just started to talk about things so she'd share a bit about her family i learned that she loved to crochet and so she asked me for some crochet hooks and some yarn and so we did that another thing i know about lois is that she loved her son david very very dearly david was um, always a high point of her day david would bring her cookies from the kitchen and that was another another thing lois enjoyed Lois, Lois was an interesting lady. She was tenacious and she was tough, but she was also a kind-hearted soul. I remember um, about a year ago, I saw Lois. Uh, she was outside. She was sitting in her walker, having a coffee in the morning. It was getting very cool in the morning, so it was in the fall. And we were doing our coat drive. And so I went up to her. I said, Lois, uh, could you use a, a new coat? And she said yes, and in that that wonderful Lois voice of hers, that kind of low gravelly voice, um, she said, "Do you have a red one?" And I said, "I will find you a red one." So I know she loved the color red as well. Lois said one thing to me too that always stuck with me. This this is what I really truly remember about her. She would say, she would you know we talk about things being tough out there. She would say. Well, she said, I know God never gives you anything you can't handle. And then I'd say, with his help. And she'd say, that's right. So Lois had, Lois had a faith. She had a simple faith in God. My hope is that I, I will see Lois again someday on the other side. And um, I'll miss her. I miss seeing Lois. Uh, she was a special lady. Hi, I'm Angela Inge, and I'm a triage specialist currently, um, but when I met with Lois, um, I was the emergency shelter advocate and the emergency shelter case manager. When I met Lois, Lois seemed very kind and loving. Um, she had this extraordinary love for her son, David, who, whom too was here at Mel Trotter. Lois was um, always adamant and determined to get housing. She and I worked um, countless times, um, me making sure that all her, her housing papers were up to date, um, getting them in for her on time, us um, getting together to follow up to make sure that she wasn't forgot about because she was adamant about getting housing. Um, I loved her enthusiasm for her determination of uh, getting housing and she was just a loving and caring person. But besides that, Lois was not going to do anything that was not going to include her son David. And um, as a mother, um, that that speaks volumes. In spite of her situation, <clears throat> she was not going to go anywhere without him. 
and and I appreciate her and I thank God for her determination because Lois did get housing and that was a huge milestone for her and the other milestone was David received housing as well and so I mean you know the work here at Mel Trotter that we do um, speak volumes uh, for the less fortunate but they're no different than we are and so I'm just glad that I was able to work with Lois and help her through her determination and getting to the resolution which got her housing so I'm so grateful to know her um, and in her passing, we here at Mel Trotter would never forget Lois because she was one of a kind. So it is so good to bring you today's message. And, uh, you know, death is a very difficult thing that we all have to deal with. It's a very distasteful thing. Uh, none of us actually like it but it is the natural state of the world that we live in. Uh, sooner or later, not only do we all have to die, but if we live long enough, we also have to deal with the death of people that we care about. And I'm so grateful for this organization, Mel Trotter Ministries, because what we do is we attempt to actually demonstrate the compassion of Christ to people while they're still alive. And the way we do that is providing services here at the time when a person just happens to need these services. And I'm so grateful that at the moment of Lois's need, Mel Trotter was able to be here. Mel Trotter provided housing. Mel Trotter provided food for her on a daily basis. And Mel Trotter gave her a real sense of hope. We've just heard some testimonials of people that knew her here and our chaplain, Martha Riggs, you know, she spent quite a bit of time with Lois in the small groups that they had. And, uh, you know, people built some really tremendous relationships that not only brought value to Lois, but they also brought value to the people here who were offering the services. So I just want you to know that whether you're a guest with us or whether you're just a friend who is father, who is a relative who is seeing this video, uh, relationships are everything. And that's what we try to build here at Mel Trotter Ministry. We try to build relationships with people so that we get to know them, we get to hear their story, and then we value them in those stories. And I'm just so grateful for this opportunity, not only to value Lois in the time that she spent here, not only to value her son David in the time that he has spent here, and he's now part of our family, he works for us now, but not only to value them in the time that they spent here, but also the value of what they have poured into our lives. And I want you to know that in this ministry, the thing that I'm so pleased about is that not only do we value the people that we serve, but the people that we serve also bring value to our lives. And Lois brought that type of value to all the people here at Mel Trotter Ministries. Almost everybody have some memory of her, some thought about her. And uh, I think that's a, that's a marvelous thing other people and the and the community that we have and the relationships that we have is god's gift to each one of us and whenever that gift is withdrawn it hurts all of us it affects all of us you know and for those of you that are viewing this video right now you know that from the experiences that you've had in your own life when someone passes on it's a tremendous loss and you feel that loss and things are different because of that loss. We feel the exact same way about Lois. And I want you to know that you, we don't have to wait until you pass away to do that. We actually feel that way about you right now. And so I just want to encourage you to be in relationship with each other, 
and also to get in relationship with the staff that's here because there's something that you can offer in that relationship that will actually bring value to them. Don't think that your life is isolated and that in isolation, it really doesn't matter. No, everything that we do, it matters not only to ourselves, but it also matters to other people and everything that other people do, it matters to us. And so we have to look for ways at all times to serve each other. So I wanna to talk to you about a message today that I think that actually brings that value. And it is in a story about death and it's a very, very familiar story because we, we hear it constantly at memorial services. And for some of us that have been in church, we probably heard this story in other contexts as well. But it's also about relationship and it's also about value. So that's what I wanna talk about today, value and relationship. God has put something on the inside of you that someone needs. You have value. Listen, all of us have value, but we have to be willing to open ourselves up and to give ourselves to other people. And then we have to let other people, you know, open themselves and give themselves to us. And it's in a community that we all grow. It's in a community that we all learn. It's in a community that we all develop. We know this from movements like AA and groups where people gather in small groups at churches, you know, and church communities, you know, and other type of communities that are formed. A family is actually a community. We know that it's in those settings where we are practicing community where we get the most value. We get the most value and we feel a sense of purpose in our lives, okay? That's how it happens and that's the way that it happens. So I'm encouraging you, please don't isolate yourself, especially in this time. Don't take your grief and isolate yourself, but take your grief and express it and share it in community because there's somebody else in the community that's probably feeling the same thing that you're feeling or that can actually bring you an encouragement because maybe they've been there too. Maybe they've gone through this before themselves and they can say, listen, it is tough because I'm telling you right now, dealing with death is tough. Okay, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But guess what? Somebody else has dealt with it too. And listen, I prayed in the prayer when I was opening up. Sometimes we want God to take us around. Sometimes we want God to take us over. Sometimes we want God to take us under. Sometimes we want God to help us run away. But actually what God does is he helps us to go through. God takes us through the storms in life. God takes us through the troubles that we face. And we have to look for strength in the trouble. And sometimes the strength that we need is actually in each other. It's in each other. Because when we try to deal with it all by ourselves, it looks insurmountable. It looks like it, it can't be done. And what I'm saying to you is this, we were created by God in such a way that we were not made to figure out everything by ourselves. We were not made to just keep ourselves in isolation and then come up with all the best possible answers and solutions. No, we need others. You know, for those of you that have grown up, all of you that are watching this, you've grown up. Without the support of others, you wouldn't be where you're at today. Even if you don't like all the support that others gave to you, it's still without that support, you would have never made it out of infancy. But we grow and we develop because others are around us and supporting us. But for some strange reason, once we get to a certain age, and once we get to a certain statue, like when we consider ourselves adults, we actually think that we don't need the support of other people anymore. 
or we think that we need the support of other people, but then we get the support of the wrong people who are not encouraging us in the right direction. And what I'm saying to you is this, the purpose of Mel Trotter Ministries being here is actually to be a support in your time of need. So I just want to encourage you to lean on that support. Keep looking for that support. Ask questions, you know, get in relationships with other people. And maybe you don't take everything that they offer to you, but maybe there's something in everything that they offer is a lesson for you. And sometimes, you know, when people uh, say things to us or they behave in a particular way, that's a lesson too, because that tells us how not to be. That tells us what not to do. So there is there is tremendous wisdom and knowledge in relationships. And I want to talk to you about a passage of scripture where death was experienced. But when that death was experienced, they were trying to deal with it all by themselves. And when you try to deal with it all by yourself, I'm telling you right now, death it's devastating. It's devastating. And it can, it can twist you up and it can mess your world up in such a way that you don't even know how to go forward. So the story I want to read to you is found in John chapter 11. It's a famous passage of scripture and it's the story of when Lazarus gets sick and then after he got sick, he died. And when he got sick, they sent word to Jesus to say, come, the one that you love is sick. And this is the way we all feel when we experience death. We keep thinking to ourselves, why can't God do something to eliminate this? But Jesus takes off and continues to go in the opposite direction for two, two days. And my grandmother used to sing a song when I was growing up. And it went like this. He may not come when you want him, but he's always here right on time. And I want you to know God may not come when you want him. He might not answer your prayers the way that you want him to answer it, but he will always answer them the right way at the right time. I'm not promising you that he's going to just give it to you just the way that you want it because he didn't give Lazarus or Mary or Martha what they wanted at the time that they thought they needed, but he didn't forget. He didn't forget about them. And I want you to know that God doesn't forget about you. You are the apple of his eye. You are so unique and created in his very image and likeness that he will never forget you. The scripture says it this way, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Listen, mama might leave you, daddy might leave you, death might take them, or they just might walk away. Your significant other might leave you, okay? Your friends might leave you, but God says, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to be with you until the end. I'm not taking my ball and going home. He does not back into situations with us. He gets into a relationship with us knowing that there's going to be things that we're going to struggle with, knowing that there's going to be things that we're going to have to deal with. And he says, I'm going to be there. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Now, sometimes it looked like he left you. And sometimes it looked like he forsake you. Sometimes he looked like he didn't care. And this is one of the reasons why so many people struggle with God, because they actually believe that he doesn't care. And if you start believing that he doesn't care, your next natural progression in your thoughts is that if he doesn't care, he must not be there. And what I'm saying to you, he cares and he's also there and he's there to help you get through the thing that you're going to have to go through he's there to get you through the trouble that you're facing don't quit don't take your ball and go home he's he's not giving up on you 
The fat lady has not sung yet, okay? It's not over. It's not over. It's still on. And you're still on. And the reason you're still on is because God is not through with you yet. There used to be a song years ago that said, Lord, please be faithful with me because God is not through with me yet. Listen, sometimes people treat you like they're through with you, but God is not through with any of us yet. There's still plenty of work to do, and the work is to get us through this thing called life. That's what the work is, to get us through this thing. So it says on his arrival, so Jesus finally decides he's going to go to where Lazarus is. Lazarus is dead. It says on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now that's dead. Or I like to say it this way. He's actually dead dead. Okay, like really, really dead. You know, four days. He's decomposing. Okay, he's really, really dead. It says, now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. And the reason why these people were coming to comfort them, because that's what we should be doing in this hour of loss. It's the only thing that we know to do, and it's the only thing that we can do well. So we want to comfort one another in this time. We want to comfort David in this time in the loss of his mother. We want to be of a comfort to you family members that are watching this video right now. We want to be a comfort, but we also want to be a comfort for the staff members here that actually had a relationship with Lois and knew her. We want to comfort them as well. But I, I want to say this. We also want to be a comfort to the guests here that had relationships with Lois, that had experiences with Lois. You need comfort in this time too. All of us need comfort when a loss is there. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. And then in verse 21, she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Listen. This is a common human reaction to death. God, if you'd been in charge, God, if you'd been on the scene, God, if you had answered my prayers, God, if you did what I wanted you to do, this would have never happened. But then she didn't stop there. She actually went a step farther and she says it this way, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Let me ask you this. Can you say that in your heart? Listen, God, you haven't always given me what I've asked for. I asked you for something, and the thing that I asked you for, it died. It died and it went away. The situation that I asked you to change just died on me, and it just didn't die. It's been dead so long that it's decomposing. And Lord, if you had been here, if you'd come when I called you, he may not come when you, when you want him, but he'll be right on time. And so God can resurrect even dead situations. God can resurrect things that according to the way that we function, according to what we know, and according to what we understand, there is no way that that can ever be restored again. And I'm saying this to you because some of you are listening to me and you're thinking that the losses that you've experienced, that that's the end. And I want you to know it ain't over until it's over. And it ain't over, not until you are over. So please, don't take your ball and go home because there's still more game to be played, you know? And God tends to not really play until we don't know what else to do anymore. And so she didn't know what else to do. So she had to, she had to reach out. She said, but I know even now, God will give you what, whatever you ask. So at least she had some level of faith, even though she was very disappointed in the fact that she didn't get what she wanted. 
She says, yes, but I'm still trusting you. And so I'm asking you, even though you haven't gotten exactly what you wanted, and you haven't gotten it the way that you want it, can you really say, well, Lord, I still trust you. And I still believe that God will give you whatever you ask for me. Okay, and then we go down to the next verse, verse 23, and Jesus says to her, your brother will, will rise again. Now the verse of scripture that I read you in the opening, it actually talks about that, that the old order of things will be wiped away. And for those of you that have lost people, I want you to know you are going to see them again. They will rise again. Okay, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And Jesus has done something in this world that is bigger than anything any of us could do. All we could do is be supportive. And that's what we want to do in this time. We can support each other. We can mourn together. We can cry together. We can lift each other up together, but that's all that we can do. But Jesus can do something that we can't do. He says, your brother will rise again. And she says, yeah, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus looks at her and he says these words, and these are the words I want to leave you with today. He says, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. And the one who believes in me, even though they die, they will rise again. So, for those of us with circumstances that have died, you trust Jesus? Because in this moment, we got to trust Jesus when it comes to Lois. It's not our job to play judge and jury. It's not our job to decide where people are gonna spend eternity. We're gonna to have to trust in Jesus because he is the life and he is the resurrection. And, but when it comes to living in this life, in your circumstances that are dying right now, in your relationships that are dying right now, do you trust him? to be the resurrection? Do you trust him to be the life? You trust him to do what you can't do? Do you trust him to do what we can't do? Because there's a limit to what we can do. There's a limit to what our society can do. There's a limit to what we can accomplish. But Jesus, man, he don't even start working until We've done everything that we know to do and came to a conclusion. I know that God will give you whatever you ask, even now, even though this thing that I'm asking for seems to have died. And for some of us, it just didn't die. It decomposed. It's got an odor to it. It actually smells. Okay, and for a lot of us in our lives, there are things that are happening in our lives that really have a bad odor. Okay, and Jesus comes on the scene. And then I want to close you with this verse. Farther down in this verse, he goes to the tomb and then he weeps. Now, let me say this to you the things that you lost, I want you to know, he weeps over those things. The trouble that you face, I want you to know that he weeps over those things, okay? The struggles that you're facing, that you're running from, that you're trying to get around, that you're trying to get under, that you're trying to get over, I want you to know that the Lord himself our high priest in heaven that offers up sacrifices for all of our shortcomings, I want you to know that he weeps for those things. And I want you to know that today he weeps for Lois. 
but more importantly, he weeps for us who are still here in the land of the living. He weeps for all the things that we're gonna to have to face. He weeps for all the struggles that we're gonna to have to get through. So my encouragement to you is this, he may not come when you want him, but I'm telling you right now, he will always come right on time. So I wanna close you with a quick word of prayer. Let's trust the Lord with death. Let's trust the Lord with Lois. But let's not just trust the Lord with Lois. Let's trust the Lord with David. But not just Lois and David. Let's trust the Lord with you. Let's trust the Lord with our staff. Let's trust the Lord with the other people that we're in relationship here in the building. Let's trust the Lord and let's trust the ultimate sacrifice that he made for Lois and for David and for all of us and for me. He made a sacrifice that I couldn't make to bring me to a place I could not get all by myself. He may not come when you want him, but we'll always come right on time. So would you join me in a quick closing word of prayer, Lord? We just want to thank you that you are the God of the living, but you're also the God of the dead. And you're the God of all realms. And the work that you do is marvelous and amazing, and it is beyond our ability to comprehend. So today, we reach out and we trust you. And even though you haven't done everything we want you to do, even though you didn't save Lois from this, even though you haven't saved some of our circumstances and our situation from where we're at right now, we still believe, Lord, that you can raise us up. And so we ask, Lord, for relationships to be raised up. We ask for circumstances to be raised up. We ask, Lord, that you would raise us up in our hearts so that when we have to go through, that we can trust you to get us through. And Lord, we ask for your strength to get the family through. We ask for your strength to get David through. But we also ask for your strength to get all of us through this situation. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's amazing people said, amen and amen and amen. God bless each one of you. Amen.
because he did it, I can do it too, yeah. Or because he did it, I can do it too. Because he did it, I can do it too. Because he did it, I can do it too.